this is Wellness Wednesday, and last month the province announced $150 million towards publicly funded fertility treatments for families in Ontario. This comes after Statistics Canada announced that Canada's birth rate has reached a record low as of 2023, or 1.3 children per woman. Now, polling shows some of the reasons, including the high cost of living, childcare costs, and personal and societal factors. But are there ways to take control of your fertility early on? Our next guest, Shania Bopa, did just that and documented her IVF journey at just 25 years old. She joins us live now to talk about why she chose to freeze her eggs so early on in life. Shania, thanks so much for joining us. I understand you're 26 years old today, so you did this last year. Uh, why did you decide to freeze your eggs at such an early age? I have various career goals that I mm -hmm. want to accomplish before I have kids. Mm -hmm. And I know that our fertility starts to decline, especially in our mid-30s, and I wanted to get ahead of it. So how did this conversation come about with your doctor? Because I assume, and, and maybe this is wrong, that you're maybe on the younger side of people who are looking to freeze their eggs. What, do, what, do the, what did the doctor mm -hmm. say to you, and what did, how did that sort of weigh into your decision then? Fertility consultations in Ontario are free, mm -hmm. and so I was directed to a fertility specialist, and we, she was really excited to have this conversation, and mm -hmm. she felt like it was really empowering that someone my age was already thinking about mm -hmm. options. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, how much did this all cost? It cost roughly $10,000, but I honestly wouldn't have been able to do it if I didn't have insurance coverage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so your insurance covers how much of that? It covered 80% of my medication costs. Wow, okay, that's pretty significant there. So really, that does, that does bring, the, sort of bring it down into a level that's much more approachable for people here. So what are the benefits here in terms of, in terms of your perspective, Shania, on, on now having these frozen eggs available for you down the line sometime? Mm -hmm. Three major benefits. A, I have a little bit of a weight lifted off my shoulders, mm -hmm. especially as a young girl thinking mm -hmm. about a potential partner and a future family. Second is my future self now has options. You know, when she, she really wants to be a mom and she's so excited to do so, but she has an option to potentially conceive, yeah. you know, not naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and then third would be just awareness. Like, I feel like I know so much about myself mm -hmm. and my reproductive health that I wouldn't have known otherwise. Yeah, I think that is the key here, is even if you do decide or don't decide to freeze your eggs, you talk to a fertility specialist, you know your options, and then you can make an informed decision. Um, so I'm curious about how it works. Mm -hmm. So you're saving this for a later date. Each year, do you have to kind of pay a certain amount of fee to keep those eggs fertile? I pay a storage fee. Mm -hmm. Every single year, it's roughly $500. That's it? Yep. Okay. Like a phone bill. Yeah. Right, yeah, like a phone bill, yeah, essentially. Yeah. Sometimes phone bills can be more than that. <laughs> they certainly can. And so, so with this in mind there, this means that you, like you said, you've given yourself options. Does, has this cleared some space in your head so you can sort of focus, as you mentioned, on your career, on your goals, on your aspirations? Is that kind of it? Exactly. Like mm -hmm. my friends and I talk about it all the time that we're thinking about a potential partner, a wedding, and creating those work back plans to mm -hmm. when we'd want to have children. And I feel less rigid in my approach to mm -hmm. my future family planning. How did your family respond? I'm curious. They were shocked, yeah. but I actually thought about egg freezing because of my older sister. She is a physician, mm -hmm. and she had this conversation because she wished someone had this conversation with her. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm curious about the process, too. So, you decide to freeze your eggs. Is it kind of like a day surgery situation? Uh, how does it physically, mm -hmm. what does that entail? It's a 14-day process. Mm -hmm. So, after you have your fertility consultation, they map out the potential plan for you. Mm -hmm. For me, it was roughly 14 days, and every Every single morning you have an appointment for blood work and an ultrasound and at night at 7 p.m. I injected the the hormones mm -hmm. and on the 14th day I had my retrieval and that retrieval you go in in the morning it's a 20 minute procedure okay. you are out cold and you wake up and it's it's for me it was quite painful oh, uh, but it, I'm sorry it lasted probably rough, like 24 hours and you mean painful upon waking up exactly ah uh, I see mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. So for, for different people, it could vary. Yes. Mm -hmm. For most of, women, they feel nothing, and they have a great experience. And this might be a stupid question, but now that you've had your eggs frozen, let's say you meet a guy tomorrow, or I don't know, later, and you decide you want to have kids, do you have to go to those eggs, or you still have eggs within you, obviously, right? Yes. So you can just have a baby. Not, it doesn't affect your fertility Exactly. As it is. Egg freezing does not affect my ability to conceive naturally, and that's the route that I will take mm. initially. And 
again, later for like baby number two or three, I have mm -hmm. options. And, and so mm -hmm. is the process then, when you want to retrieve those eggs from, from the freezer, let's say, to sort of put it in really yeah. generic terms, uh, would that then become an IVF procedure? Is that, is that how that works, to sort of conceive a child at the end? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we would take the frozen egg, we would make an embryo, and then we would implant the embryo. Right. In either you or a surrogate. Yes. It could be that way. Yeah, yeah. Wow, fascinating stuff. So what, what's your, lastly, before we let you go, Shania, what's your message to, I guess, young women like you out there who feel like they don't have options, who are feeling like, ah, oh, no, I can't be a spinster. I got to get hitched or I got to go to a sperm bank right away. What would you tell them? I want women to feel like they can do it all. And to do it all, you need the tools and systems to support you. Mm -hmm. And learning about your reproductive health is one of the best things you can do for future you. Okay. Wow. What a fascinating conversation. Yeah. Shania Thank Bulba. you so Appreciate much. Appreciate the time this morning. Thank you so much. We should also mention coming up at 745 this morning, we're going to continue this conversation. We'll have a, a fertility specialist joining us, Dr. Fable Iceberg, for her medical expertise on the topic. Shania, appreciate this. Thank that you. That conversation Thank you. is coming Perfect. up here on CB24 Breakfast. Nice Thank, you you so Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, time for part two of our Wellness Wednesday segment. Earlier this morning, we spoke with Shania Bopa about her decision to freeze her eggs at age 25, pointing to a trend of women waiting longer to have children. So as we continue this conversation, we have fertility uh, expert uh, Dr. Faye Weisberg, who joins us now with uh, providing her medical expertise on this. Dr. Weisberg, appreciate your uh, time this morning here. So let's talk Thank about you. this. The idea of, of freezing eggs here, it's not a new idea, but you know, women getting younger and younger doing this. What is the sort of advice and guidance coming from a doctor like yourself about this? So I think that freezing eggs is actually fairly new when you think about the advances in medicine. The problem is that eggs are so full of water that the technology to be able to freeze them and defrost them properly has really been a huge issue. Mm -hmm. So for the last um, 10 to 15 years, more and more women are uh, freezing their eggs. And I think that from a woman's young woman's perspective, it's really important to think about. What we don't want is women choosing a partner for the wrong reason um, because they're worried about their fertility. So that sort of takes that type of pressure off. And there's also certain medical conditions that over time will get worse, such as endometriosis mm -hmm. or a family history of early menopause. So there are some very good reasons for women to freeze their eggs. Um, also, we see we do it with women who are, are experiencing a diagnosis of cancer before they have their treatments so that we can help preserve their fertility. So, you know, technology advances, it makes really good uh, strides for women's health. But, you know, the long run, it, it does decrease uh, the birth rate and changes the age at which women have their babies, which at the end of the day is really related to the age of the eggs for mm. complications and risks. So it's just the way technology has moved. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Weisberg, if you can give us some insight into uh, the process of egg freezing, we spoke with Shania Bopa, who froze her eggs at 25 years old, and she said for her specifically, they kind of mapped out a plan and it took 14 days. So I understand that it can vary woman to woman. Uh, how complicated is the process and are there any health risks associated with it? So that's a great question. The number one question that I get from women who want to come and freeze their eggs is, is this going to you know, make my menopause early? Am I going to run out of eggs before it's time because we're doing this? Mm. But it, at the end of the day, women are born with a certain number of eggs. And when we go through menopause, we have none. We don't regenerate more eggs as men do with their sperm. So we also know that there's this process called atresia, which is sort of the dying off of eggs. And we lose thousands of eggs all the time. So we're really sort of capturing what might not have even made it. Uh, the process of egg freezing really involves hyperstimulating the eggs. And that means going on medication to override our own body, where normally we would make one, rarely two or three eggs a month. Mm -hmm. So we super ovulate to make you know, 15 to 20 as many eggs as we can that's safe for women. And then we retrieve them. So it's like an IVF procedure where we monitor a woman, she takes medication to stimulate her ovaries, she takes medication not to ovulate, and then we remove the eggs and then they're frozen. Hmm. And they're frozen unfertilized, un uh, so they are open to sperm in the future. So, doctor, the, the, the advantage here is that you're taking these younger eggs, healthier eggs, et cetera, you know, in the hopes of a, of a future pregnancy with, with, with whether well, it was like I said, healthier eggs. Is there any concern about the body they go back into being older and carrying a pregnancy to term and things like that? Like, how does that factor in the age of the, of the pregnant woman when, when the, the eggs are sort of reinserted, as it were? 
So the most important factor for the age of reinserting is the health of the woman who is accepting the eggs. We know as we get older, there's a higher risk of us developing diabetes, hypertension, or any type of medical condition that can put a woman at high risk for pregnancy. But a woman who's healthy, uh, who has no chronic medication, who who doesn't, you know, who has really no risk for pregnancy, really should be able to carry a pregnancy. Mm. The, the other problem is that pregnancy itself carries an increased risk of stroke or heart disease. So we have to be careful about the limits that mm. we put on for when a woman can carry. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Faye Weisberg, really appreciate your time this morning to help us break down and understand uh, what freezing your eggs entails and the implications and, I guess, prospects for people choosing mm -hmm. to do so. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day.